What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? The old coot here coming at you with another exciting video. Today we're going to talk about Kinoto, the non-alcoholic version and also the adult version of as close as I could get to Kinoto. But we'll talk about that in a second. Remember, this video is intended for entertainment purposes only. Keep that in mind. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not responsible for anything you do or did or will do before, during, or after watching this video. So keep that in mind. You are responsible for your own actions. Please be responsible. Okay, so let's talk about Kinoto. Kinoto usually comes in bottles like this size. This is the non-alcoholic version. This is Stoppy. This is their Red Bitter. They also do make a Kinoto version. Very tiny bottle, as you can see here, 3.4 ounces. This one is, I believe this is Sun Bitter, right, which is another company. And then this bottle is not the actual product, but this company, Sun Pellegrino, also makes a version of Kinoto. And now I found out they make it in a bottle version and they also make it in a, in a small little 4.3 ounce, I think, can version. What I'm jealous of right now is Canada. <laughs> because Canada, I'm in a love-hate relationship with you. Canada has a version of Kinoto that's a one liter size. I mean, that's almost the size of like this bottle here. Like they make a one liter version of Kinoto that costs $3 up in Canada. Here in the United States, Without cheating, comment in the comment section down there below. Take a wild guess how much the non-alcoholic little teeny tiny bottle, this is 3.4 ounces, I believe, of Kinoto costs. Do, 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 do. Okay, there you go. Five dollars, <laughs> five to six dollars, depending on which Italian grocery store you go to or where in the United States you are. That is ridiculous. That is highway robbery <laughs> for the cost of these things. And I get it. They're paying for shipping. They're paying for import taxes or whatever the case may be. But that is just ridiculous. I mean, there has to be a better way to buy Kinoto, especially the non-alcoholic version for less money. And like I said, Canada, you can send me as much as you want to. I will take it by the pallet load. Okay, so let's get into Kinoto. So Kinoto is like a little orange. It's kind of like it's kind of like the size of a golf ball. And it's the myrtle leaf orange, if I don't make a mistake. There is a California season that's actually happening right now. It's usually late March, all of April, and then the early part of May. So that's when they harvest them in California. In Sicily, which is, I think, where most of the Italian product comes from, I believe they harvest them somewhere like, is it August? August, September? If you know, comment down below just to, ref just to refresh my memory. But anyways, Kinoto is basically, let's use this as an example. So Kinoto is basically like an orange and it tastes, it's got, you know, obviously it's an orange, so it's got citrus flavor, but it also has notes, right? Kinoto, when they make the final product out of the Kinoto oranges, the Kinoto drink, the beverage, usually is dark in color. It's kind of like this dark in color and it's, and it's carbonated, it's non-alcoholic. The Kinoto beverage usually tastes like, it's got some like artichoke notes. It's got coriander. It's got cardamom. There's some notes of like black peppercorn in there, like a little spice. And then it's got some bark and root and other influences like that. It's got some rosemary hints in there. That's kind of what Ginoto tastes like. And you're sitting there going like, is it an acquired taste? Yes. If you're not used to bitter beverages, like the Amaro end of the spectrum, right? Amaro means bitter in Italian. It's kind of like that, you know, it's kind of like an acquired taste. But once you get into it, you're hooked. <laughs> like at least I got hooked. So what's the closest adult, like let's say we took two paths. One path is the non-alcoholic version, which I will show you in a, in a future video, how, to, how I make my own basically, as close to the original as possible. Then there's the alcohol version, which is what I've got here today. So how do we get as close to that as possible? If I could only pick one a motto, like one bitter beverage that was as close to Kinoto as I could possibly get. I would say it was this. It was Ginar. It's pronounced Ginar. If your parents had one of these or have one of these in their cabinet at home, usually where the China is that they never use in like 10 years or 20 years, go ahead and hit that like button because you know you have a bottle laying around somewhere. So this is what it looks like, right? Very dark, deep, rich color. Usually I don't drink any of these, any of this stuff straight. I usually mix it with San Pellegrino mineral water, ironically. But usually I'll mix it in with something. And, and then depending on the mix of mineral water or club soda to the Chinar, I can get pretty close to that Kinoto flavor, 
you know, and then it just has like a little bit of the alcohol kick to it. So this is what the bottle looks like. 70 proof Chinar. It's got the artichoke right there. So you can kind of see what the predominant ingredient is. And product of Italy, right? 35% alcohol. It's a, it's a liqueur. This is the one liter size. Canada, still jealous because you get the non-alcoholic one liter size. You know, just, well, yep, you've been there, done that. Okay. So then <laughs> this is the backside of water. This is what it looks like, right? If you want to go ahead and take a screenshot. What I don't like, I'm not a fan of, is that caramel color added. I guess they wanted to give it some color. I, I would have preferred it just natural as was or as is, but that's fine. You know, it is what it is. Usually this is a gift that you give to someone, like if you're of Italian descent in some way, shape or form, usually you bring this to like a house. Like when you're going to go to dinner, you're going to do a party, that kind of thing. Like, oh, I had to bring something for dinner. I brought this. And it's a good like after dinner, pre-dinner, aperitivo, aperitif, kind of a beverage to kind of like, you know, just help with the digestion, digestivo, right? To get that kind of vibe going. So if I had to pick just one, it would be the chinar, right? That's pretty close to quinoto. And what I do is I mix it with some ice and some tempo. We're going to get the idea. Okay, if I could pick two, now you're getting cl even closer, even closer to that quinoto flavor. This is Aperol. Aperol is basically, it's a bitter as well, right? One of those Amaros, like Chinar is an Amaro, this is an Amaro. So this one is more like orange derived and it's got that neon orange kind of look to it as it is. If you can see on the back, you can kind of see what some different ideas here are, right? Aperol shaken, Aperol on the rocks, Aperol and soda. You kind of get the idea, right? Kind of gives you some, some ingredients. I believe, is it Bar Barbieri makes this one? And if you mix, or wait, actually, let's talk about this. So if, if you look at what Aperol looks like in the glass, that's basically what it looks like. The camera isn't picking this up, but it has like this neon orange kind of look to it, almost more on the reddish side. So this one's a little darker. This one's a little redder. This one, I believe has less alcohol content. So this is only 11% alcohol by volume. So that kind of gives you an idea of what Aperol is. Okay, really quick. Aperol, Campari, that comparison. I don't have Campari. I should get a bottle. I will soon. But Aperol is less alcohol, more sugar. Campari is more alcohol, less sugar. This is very mild, mellow. Just gives like that hint, those notes of kind of the bitterness and a little bit of the citrusiness. Campari is more on the spice side. So a little more spicier. It's got more of like those roots and barks that make it bitter. And it's got more of those herbs in there that kind of make it a little more spicier. So that's the difference. But if you mix Chinar with Aperol together, ooh la la, and then put in <laughs> some San Pellegrino or some club soda, if that's what you have, what you get, oh, is this. And this is as close to the flavor, maybe not the color, but this is as close to, let me take a sip. Oh, purely for research purposes. This, to me, tastes 99.9999999% as close to Kinoto, the non-alcoholic version, as you can possibly get. So eight minute video to tell you to mix these two together. I'll do a shorter version, I promise. But that's the trick. If you want to ramp it up a notch, you could take the zest of like an orange, a lemon, or a grapefruit would be ideal. I don't have any grapefruits, but take the zest of a grapefruit, just run it around the, the rim of the glass, put the zest of the grapefruit in there, you get even more of that quinoto y kind of a flavor kind of vibe. If you're a person that grew up on quinoto, hit that like button too. And if you did put some citrus in there to kind of knock off the bitterness or whatever, comment down below. Let me know what your story was. Anyways, hope you like what you're seeing. If any of these companies want to engage in a conversation about sponsoring me, San Bitter, Stoppi, San Pellegrino, Aperol, Chinar, you know, Barbieri, whatever it is. I'm more than happy to entertain that idea. I'm the old coot and I'll catch you all in the next exciting video.